with a report to the board from the Communications Outreach and Engagement Committee. And as Jean said, we have four and a half minutes before the public comment period. And there are no decisions to be made. We're not bringing forward any decisions. This is really an informational update. Um, and, uh, you know, I apologize that the PowerPoint presentation actually didn't go out beforehand because a lot of this can be read. And so we'll make that, make sure that that happens and that it's posted on the website. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, great. So, um, again, uh, and no point, no need to go through the membership again, other than to, I think the committee wants to thank Gail Hunt for her loyal um, um, semi membership on the committee, and she's been a terrific contributor and has, has participated in essentially every meeting we've had since we began, and her input has been valuable. Um, four, th four elements to the uh, report today. A description of the process for getting public feedback on the priorities and research agenda, both those things that have happened, those things that are planned, and opportunity for uh, response from the members of the board in terms of suggestions or enhancements. Brief description of our expanding digital communications, the website, our, our presence on Twitter, um, not my presence, but Pecori's presence on Twitter. It's beyond me. Um, an update on um, what we've achieved in terms of what we are, we've done in terms of stakeholder engagement and, again, the Speakers Bureau. Um, the, as, as we know, the public, as we um, decided yesterday, the public feedback on the priorities and research agenda will begin Monday, January 23rd. You all remember that the statute um, says between 45 and 60 days, we will have 53 days. We've sort of cut it in, in half um, for pragmatic reasons. Um, the opportunity at www.pacori.org uh, slash provide input for um, general feedback. Um, the responses will be displayed that are received through the, the website will be displayed um, for public viewing on our website. And we will be also be taking, as we have done um, uh, consistently, there will be feedback, pr uh, opportunity for feedback through the mail for those who don't have access. Um, we have uh, discussed earlier this meeting that there will be a national patient and stakeholder dialogue. It's scheduled for February 27th at the, um, um, it, it will, the, the location will be the National Press Club club in Washington. This will be an all-day meeting um, and uh, patient, we have patient and caregiver focus groups that were focused actually on the priority themes, not on the research agenda that took place November and December and clinician focus groups that will take place in February. Um, as I, the, uh, the patient and stakeholder dialogue um, will be webcast and there'll be a teleconference dial-in there will be a stakeholder panel discussion and three and a half hours essentially available for public input reserved for, and people will be asked and invited to make um, formal comments during that time as well as informal comments during the, the meeting itself. Um, in terms of the patient and caregiver focus groups, there were 12 focus groups that took place in November and December, 96 patients and caregivers across four cities and, and regions. Um, and, the, and it was very successful in identifying questions that patients and caregivers have and the information they need to make informed health decision. It provided early and somewhat general feedback on the developing national priorities. Again, it was in a, an earlier format than we approved yesterday. And the results of the focus group will be considered in the process of revising the priorities and agenda. And that process is similar to what Jessica went through with us yesterday um, in terms of analysis of the um, analysis of the comments along the dimensions described, feedback to the priorities working group, from there to the program development committee, and then presentation to the board. This is just a description of the patient and caregiver focus groups. I believe Gail was at the Baltimore focus group. Yeah. Um, and you can see the, dem the demographics um, and uh, 
dis distribution of patients and caregivers and conditions across the four focus groups. Um, in the, um, I believe it's the patients, parents of children with asthma, somewhere in there, parents of children with pediatric asthma, and in the, in the um, Atlanta um, uh, uh, focus group, there was an overrepresentation of African American um, pa uh, consumers and patients and caregivers. And in Phoenix, the focus group was intended to be delivered in Spanish. And after the group convened and introductions were made, the group asked that the <coughs> excuse me the deliberations continue in English. And so we we made that available and the the. Um, focus group leads were prepared for that, and the participants just were more comfortable. And I think it was an interesting learning about not making assumptions um, based on geography. The clinician focus groups are scheduled for February with a March 1st report back to the board, uh, again, for input. And there will be four physician groups and four nurse gr groups of nurses, Philadelphia, Birmingham, somewhere in California, and Chicago. And I believe the Program Development Committee is working on a discussion guide for the facilitators. And the COEC is having a face-to-face -face meeting for several hours this afternoon. And we're thinking about providing recommendations around how to, how to think about the clinicians to include in the groups. And we'll be giving that information to the PDC and to the facilitators. Um, and, and as I said, PCORI, all of the input that's received through these multiple venues will be, rece will be reviewed. Um, the, there will be a report, a summary report, summarizing the input, as well as the specific comments reflected on the website. And the, um, the revised national priorities and research agenda. Um, and, and I should say that the, the report on the website will enable folks to see where input actually impacted changes in language and ch any changes that do come about as a result of that. And then the agenda will be considered for adoption by the special meeting that Jean described, teleconference of the board um, uh, in April. We're going to uh, resume your presentation if someone identifies themselves within Just the next, uh, we will let you know within the next six minutes. Okay. And, um, just, uh, um, in response to some of the input we've gotten from some of our public commenters, um, I think the report you're, you've started to give and you're about to give will, will um, hopefully uh, provide some reassurances to our speakers and to Mr. Coelho that, um, that in fact, um, we are seeking stakeholder input and patient and caregiver input at every phase and stage of our work. Um, uh, it's worth remembering that our board meeting is taking place here today in Jacksonville, but we have been to Seattle, we have been to Los Angeles, we have been to New Orleans, we've been to St. Louis, we've been to New York, um, and we will continue traveling around the country with every other board meeting in order to seek stakeholder and patient and caregiver input. Um, and, uh, and through the use of both these focus groups and um, the public release of our priorities, um, we're hoping that stakeholders not only can provide us meaningful input, but they can help us to make what Mr. Coelho calls some of those tough decisions by making sure that we have listened carefully to all of their input before we make those decisions. So I look forward to the rest of your report. Thanks, Steve. And, and I, I do want to thank both Mr. Coelho and, and Mr. Hatfield. I mean, this really, this report in its entirety is about stakeholder engagement. Almost everything that comes through or to our committee and back to the board is about stakeholder engagement. And I do think, and, um, and, and this, is not, um, this is not the work of the COEC alone, this is really the work of the methodology committee, the uh, working group on priorities and the PDC have really put together a thoughtful and I think expansive approach to looking for every opportunity to identify, to, to get, um, deep and broad, both deep and broad feedback on the priorities and research agenda. Be and um, in addition to the February 27th meeting, which we, the National Press Club holds, auditorium holds 600 people, and we're certainly hoping to fill it up. Um, it will be available on the web, 
um, the focus groups that we've described that, that have already been completed with patients on the priorities and the focus group with um, clinicians that, that, are, that are coming up. In addition to that, we're using all the, the um, traditional um, means of communicating we've used. We have now a, a large uh, tenfold increase in our subscribers to the website. We have 300 organizations on our um, distribution list with whom we communicate around opportunities for feedback. Um, and I'm going to just um, continue on now with the um, talking about expanding digital communications. The website has been updated. There's now an executive director's corner. For those of you who haven't visited the website, there are web videos featuring some of our more um, telegenic um, board members <laughs> and staff and our ex very telegenic executive director. Um, there is a general feedback form on the web that's quite easy to use and we now have literally a little form for filling out for subscribers. In addition to that, I think it's fair to say that anyone who has any contact with PCORI in any way, shape or form is encouraged to sign up and join our email list and that includes anyone who has uh, made an inquiry about uh, a pilot project, um, a, a peer reviewer, anyone has been corralled and their name has been put on the list. Um, and as, as I said before, we're, we're still small but mighty. We've had a tenfold increase in subscribers to the email list since February in 10 months. Um, we expect that that will actually increase substantially over the next few months, particularly in, in relationship with the um, PCORI funding announcement. And this is a picture of page views by month um, of hits to our website with milestones that have been put in. And you can see as the pilot project grants program began and the grant reviewer application process, um, the number has fallen off and we expect that, excuse me, come Monday with the release of the public release of the priorities. Um, and um, that will, we'll see a big, we anticipate and are looking forward to a big uptick in that number also. We are on Twitter, whatever Twitter is. Um, and um, clearly we're, we're, we're doing this in an, in an effort to engage a larger and more di diverse audience out, uh, beyond my age bracket um, and to increase awareness of PCORI's work among individuals who are tracking health conversations online. Um, someone is actually tweeting on our behalf and you can follow that at PCORI, the, the Twitter tag is at PCORI. In addition, um, f for anyone who's interested in tracking what others are tweeting about us, um, Bill Silberg sh shared with me there is a website, www.tweetdeck, T-W-E-E-T-D-E-C-K.com, which will enable you to track, as Bill has been doing, the tweets from those who are monitoring and present at, actually, our board meeting. Um, so for anyone who's interested in doing that, it's an opportunity to stay on top of our activities, funding announcements, and engagement opportunities. Um, and clearly, we're also looking at um, additional web-based and mobile technologies, whether or not a Facebook page makes sense for us at this point. Um, and again, all in the name of two-way engagement and stakeholder engagement. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and this is, this is a display for you of what we have done um, since our March 2011 board meeting in St. Louis. And the, um, with each board meeting um, described here on the, on the visual, there's a brief description of what we've done city by city in terms of um, stakeholder engagement in relationship to the board meetings and in addition to the public um, access to the board and public comment periods. And as you look through that and look back at what we've done, it is clearly an evolution, if you will, of our approach. Our first two fora were quite general in their nature. We were really asking people to come and attend, in part to give them some sense of who we were, but also to understand, in general, what the concerns and questions were about healthcare and healthcare decisions. Um, when, we, when we went to July in Washington, uh, to Washington in July of 2011, we had 
two small group meetings with patients and caregivers, and eight small group meetings with re representatives of 43 stakeholder organizations um, to, again, understand in a more targeted way issues and concerns represented by each of the stakeholder constituencies. They were very rich meetings, I think, and we got a lot of information that from that. In September in Seattle, we had invited presentations from Pacific Northwest stakeholders. Um, again, very rich um, presentations. In November 2011, in New Orleans, two site visits, and again, an event uh, to um, local community health centers, and an invited panel of presenters from stakeholders in the healthcare community in New Orleans. And what um, our invited panel last night here in Jacksonville, again, very rich and, and diverse, to some extent, set of stakeholders with a common set of themes. I think it was quite striking how common the themes were. As we look back at this, I think one of the things that's obvious is, to some extent, these are opportunistic. And in our first year of doing this work, we have, we have moved community by community in kind of a tactical way. And our committee is meeting tomorrow, uh, I'm sorry, today, <laughs> um, to spend some time actually looking at 2012 and coming up with a set of recommendations and a framework for the board, which we'll bring back in March, to think about the entire year and what are some of the what, what are some of our learnings? Where could we have done a better job? And how we're thinking about, with a much longer her time horizon, planning for the remaining board meetings for the next for the rest of the year. This is just a reminder of the very thoughtful um, stakeholders who spent the evening with us last night. And I've already talked about this. Um, Speakers Bureau, just briefly, we've, um, PCORI staff and board members um, have presented at 49 meetings since March of 2011 with a display of the stakeholder groups that we've engaged with at meetings convened by the stakeholder groups. Joe has done a um, yeoman job um, of, since, since September. I think you've had 22 meetings on the research priorities or the direction of the research priorities just in September and about 30 in the last two weeks as far as I can count. Um, these are uh, representative of upcoming Speakers Bureau presentations. Um, again, American Nurses Association, National Health Council, National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, the Veterans Health Administration Clinical Conference, um, and the healthcare information and management systems, HIMSS, um, I can't even, secondary use of data symposia, again, a topic we've talked about in great length over the last day and a half. Um, and so I'll just open it up for comments from our committee members and questions from the board. Sharon, um, Steve, my, could we just, just pause for a minute for committee members to she had asked first for committee members to uh, supplement with any additional information, if you have any. Okay, sorry. My, my question, um, and it'll, it'll start off with a comment, it, 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 it comes about as we think about setting our priorities. And especially in the context of um, uh, some public perception that priority setting may involve making our agenda more condition specific. Within the last 24 hours, we've heard that trauma patients should be a priority. We've heard that patients with Parkinson's disease have some real serious issues. We've heard that patients with diabetes have some significant challenges. We've heard about um, uh, epilepsy. We've heard about mental illness. And so as we travel the country and we get input about a variety of conditions, and I could add to the list heart disease, maternal fetal medicine, multiple sclerosis, all the kinds of patients we've... The idea of priority setting, um, at least my definition of it, doesn't necessarily include picking one condition to study over another. And in fact, one of the things that I, I, I believe is very important about the initial priorities that we've set is that there is space in our, in our priorities and our agenda for all of the conditions um, that have been represented by the speakers who have come before PCORI. Okay. So my question is, um, 
in the context of communications, engagement, and outreach, how do we assure people that, yes, we're willing to make important decisions, but that doesn't necessarily mean excluding any particular patient populations, so that people don't worry that, um, that we are going to exclude people from MS because they didn't show up at our meeting or they didn't have a national association organizing them and representing them. And in fact, the legislation says that we're, we're, it's incumbent upon us to look at patients who don't have diseases with high prevalence. So I think we have to communicate what is a priority, um, not in terms of what our priorities are, but, but the priority setting process won't necessarily involve excluding patients with certain conditions. Can, can, can you help us figure out how to do that? Um, well, I think, and I think we, we have certainly spent a lot of time over the last, um, in particular yesterday, talking and thinking about that. And I think, I mean, I think, I think Mr. Coelho is right that when you set priorities, by by definition, you are um, you're making a choice of an approach, at least to begin with. And I think, um, I think we've actually have put together some, some substantial documents to try and address those concerns. And, and the channels for communicating that are, are manifold. They're certainly, but, and I think they begin with listening. And, and, and um, Mr. Hatfield said it, by, by listening to people's concerns and, and hearing their feedback on the, on what may initially be confusing about how we've described our priorities, by, enable, by, by taking that feedback and responding to it in a way that, that makes clear that the concerns were heard and that the process does not exclude um, and will not exclude um, making, so, making choices about focusing on conditions of interest and importance um, because the framework is broad enough to include that. And I do think, I think, and I, I, my, um, I think common wisdom, 17 seems to be a magical number, is that we all need to hear things and hear it differently 17 times before it begins to change the way we view the world. Um, and that's part of the problem with dissemination, which is our next topic, um, 17 years and 17 times. <laughs> But, but I do think we need to, to take that to heart and to, and to um, as we were told last night, meet people where they are and communicate and, and um, participate in two-way communication where people are and in language that reflects that we have heard what they say, that it is important and, and as I had said earlier, when we, re when we post the feedback and we're going to be post both summaries as well as the, the, um, the actual text of all the feedback we get on the priorities and research agenda, we will also make clear what, how the feedback influenced the changes in the description, the changes in the priorities, the changes in the language, and the changes in the research agenda. And I don't think any of us have any question that there will not be um, uh, we will not get valuable information that will in fact impact what the final um, release of priorities and research is. Thanks. Uh, we have Dr. Selby first, and then uh, Marnie, and uh, Christine, and Frida, and Shireen. I, I just wanted to uh, respond also to Steve and, and, and to echo what was implicit in, in your um, statement almost that uh, as the, um, the priorities and, and research agenda working groups met, we were very conscious that this was the beginning of PCORI's funding, uh, that the statute and our own concerns and what we were hearing from patients was that um, uh, uh, patients wanted to be included, wanted to have uh, uh, the opportunity to speak with PCORI about covering research that mattered to them. And that was really one of the, uh, I think, the overriding reasons why you see the priorities and the agenda not being specific in that way. The, the agenda is very specific in the kinds of studies that we'll fund, but um, uh, I think we will always have a portion, and the agenda says that we will always have a portion of the funding open to a key question in any area. So um, 
I, I'm very proud of that and pleased that that's the way the working group came down and, uh, and, and think it's a, a novel and um, a very responsive way forward. Arnie Epstein, board. Sharon, you talked a bit about the um, stakeholder conference in late February, the National Press Club. Could you say a bit about more about how you see that supplementing activities and how you're going to, how we'll disseminate what comes in afferently from that conference to board members and who are not there, and in return to attendees of the conference and to others more broadly thereafter? Um, so the, the, the format of the day essentially will be a presentation with rationale um, in detail of the, um, the priorities and research agenda and an explanation of, um, to Steve's point, about um, what this is and why the, the rationale for proceeding in this direction and the opportunity that, as Joe described, for um, for um, important research questions to be answered even in this first set of funding um, proposals. Um, and then three and a half hours of um, feedback, of open, essentially open mic for prepared comments. Um, we're encouraging people to actually prepare comments. There will be an MC who will manage the process. The board members are invited to either attend or, or call in for as much for all or some of the meeting. Um, in terms of capturing the themes, um, I think that's a critically important um, set of activities. And the, the I, you know, I don't think a, um, we, haven't t we haven't talked about this, but I don't think a um, recording of the eight hours of or seven hours of conversation is going to be useful, but certainly capturing the themes, issues, and posting that information on the website. Um, and a summary, again, with a summary to enable people to understand what happened and then to dive into the, to the specifics. Right, so a, a short precy, if someone can yeah. manage in 15 minutes and get the key themes, that would be great. Christine? Thank you, thank you, Sharon. Um, to you and all of your Give um, your committee. full name, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Christine Gertz, Board of Governors member. So thanks to you and your committee and, and Gail <laughs> for all the work that you do. Um, if it takes um, 17 times to say something before someone hears, I hope I don't have to repeat this 15 more times. But I want to more strongly reiterate the, um, the concern that I brought up at the last meeting, that it seems like our clinician um, outreach and clinician focus groups are, are primarily to um, medical physicians and, you know, and, and to nurses. And I'd, I'd really like to see us doing more outreach to other types of, of clinicians who are very much a part of the healthcare system and are very much a part of the, um, of the research enterprise. Now, Bob Zwolek and I are going to be doing outreach at an AMA meeting to AMA societies or societies, but also to the Healthcare Professional Advisory Committee, which is why we chose that forum. But we have a half hour, and it's 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 not it's not adequate. And so I would just like to reiterate my my concern that we're not that we could do be doing a much better job in doing outreach to um, clinicians beyond beyond doctors and, and nurses. Point well taken. Um, Frida Lewis Hall, Board of Governors. Um, I wanted to ask two questions. Um, the first is, um, well, I'm sorry. Let me first say congratulations. I think it has been um, a quite striking um, opening of the dialogue over the last year in almost every quarter. And I, and I do think that um, you should be congratulated uh, for all of that work. Uh, the question that I have is uh, whether or not we use the opportunities that we deliver talks to groups to also convene and collect input and information. Um, I know I've done the um, I've, I've done talks as well, and many times I get one-offs in a hallway or afterwards, but not um, had the opportunity to convene an organized set of input 
from the organizations, and I think those are missed opportunities. Um, and then the second question would be, if and when we do that, how would we pull that information together, pull the themes out, and be able to bring that back? Because I think that where there are opportunities, in particular to reach groups that we are not typically reaching, it, it's important to tap them where they are, get it, and then bring it back to the group. And I think the second part of that question is actually easier to answer than the first, which is that um, once we, and I think it's a great suggestion, once we um, come up with and figure out how to execute on um, a specific set of inquiries that would, um, that we could easily do in writing or um, verbally at a, in, in, a, in association with the presentation, collecting that information, it would, so in the, it would come back certainly to the board in terms of feedback and would be part of our deliberations and then would be available to the public as part of the record of the, uh, the, the, the proceedings of the meeting. That um, slide I put up with present, you know, dates and audience could easily have, you know, questions asked um, information received. Um. And Shireen. So uh, uh, also congratulations for me. I mean, it's, a, it's amazing. The task that you have before you in communications is tremendous, not only given our time uh, uh, crunch at PCORI, but all the new things that we're trying to do, new things that we're trying to do differently. So I wanted to comment on the priorities specificity issue. Um, and there's another real communication challenge there. Of course, what we're trying to do is not prioritize by saying these conditions, diseases, problems are in and these are out, but to really place a PCORI lens on the research world and really prioritize and uh, add specificity based on the approach. So the uh, Shireen Gabriel Methodology Committee. Uh, and, and this is where I think the work of the methodology committee can help. Some of the discussions that we've had have been uh, building what we um, think of as a PCORI lens and putting that on our on, on research and only um, I, and identifying those projects and those ideas that really uh, uh, pass through that based on based on our you know methodologic standards and what. So I was just going to offer that uh, we might be able to help. Uh, a little bit more even with respect to sending that message and perhaps making it a little bit clearer to the community that yes we are prioritizing but we're not prioritizing the usual way we're doing it a bit differently and we're placing a PCORI lens on research to do that and and I'm sure there's an there is an opportunity and a request out for someone from the methodology committee to be part of this February 27th meeting and I think that would be a great opportunity to, to begin to describe that. Um, um, the other thing that occurs to me, Shireen, because you, you are um, doing a lot of work on things like um, patient engagement and so forth which is very related to what we're doing and I know we have um, two of our members on one of your um, working groups, um, something to consider would be, um, just as we have Gail sitting in, who's a member of the PDC, might be valuable to have a member of um, the methodology committee sit in when they can in our um, group, because we're grappling with some of the same, very same issues that you are um, from a di different angle but with the same intent. And I think we would learn a lot from what the methodology committee is thinking about and doing and, and vice versa. You'd, you'd have transparency perhaps greater than, uh, uh, than currently on what we're doing. Great. Yeah, so I just, uh, uh, Gray Norquist, I'm a member of the board and of this particular committee. And um, so I want to pick up on what Christine and Frida said. and. You're right. I mean, we have a lot of work to do to reach out broadly. I think there's one other issue is that we ourselves have to think about how we engage people on the outside. And so we've had some hits and misses uh, when we've done community engagement. And some of the board members have, have learned and learned. I think we have a little ways to go because we are 
a quarry when we go out and we need to learn how to engage people and listen and really listen and understand and if you know I think that's going to be a challenge for some of us also but uh, I think that's very important and I think Frida that sometimes um, the problem is we give lectures we talk to people we don't talk with them and so I think that's going to be a key issue is that how we learn to do that and that when we go out say a little bit about who we are but then stop and just say we're really here to listen to you and I mean it I really do want to listen to you and give some feedback and I think we've been challenged at that at times so. and, and just just a comment on that I, I mean, we have dealt with the speakers bureau um, similar to our stakeholder engagements which is kind of in a reactive and opportunistic way you know where can we get on an agenda um, and get someone there and make a presentation and I think what what you're raising and what, what you're raising, Gray, is thinking much more strategically about what those opportunities mean um, at RAT and, and actually having a plan that we can consistently use. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a contribution we can make. Okay. Well, I want to echo uh, some of the comments that have also been made regarding uh, the superb job uh, that uh, the Communications Outreach and Engagement Committee uh, um, has done. And oh, want to thank you on behalf of the board uh, for your le uh, terrific leadership as, as well. Uh, we still have a great deal of work to do, but we're certainly building on a quite auspicious foundation looking into the future. So thank and, you. And I just want to use this to bridge to our next presentation because I think the critical work that we can do over the next in particular the next year is really laying the seeds for building a pull and tilling tilling the soil so that when we have evidence to disseminate mm -hmm. that we have a track record and we have earned trust among those whom we have committed that we will listen to and we have, can demonstrate that we have done that so that we actually have begun the process of dissemination to the extent that we are effective in communication, outreach, and engagement with stakeholders. And the next presentation uh, to which uh, uh, Dr. Levine is referring is a report from the PCORI Dissemination Working Group, which we will hear after the break. It's now.